When I tap this button, the water shall rise. What the f When I tap this button, the water shall rise. Wait, it actually works! <laughs> Look! <laughs> It's hard to quantify, but I probably spent more than 100 hours trying to learn graphics programming. It is the art of rendering things to the screen. And when I look on video games that have interactive snow or grass, I always think, how did the programmers do this? It is so cool, I want to be able to do that. In this video, I'm gonna share my journey in trying to learn this incredibly hard skill. What have I achieved so far and what can you expect if this is a skill that maybe you want to learn? Let's jump right into it. It begins with a triangle, the hello world equivalent of a graphics program. This is the first step most of us take when learning OpenGL or whatever graphics API you decide to use. When you're starting out, this is really hard because the upfront knowledge you need is a lot. What's a shader? What's a vertex? What's a buffer? If you want to do anything else than a triangle, you need to understand all of these concepts. And that's why it's so hard to learn graphics programming. The learning curve starts up here when it usually starts down there. I wouldn't be surprised if I've spent 40 hours just remaking this triangle application. 40 hours? <laughs> Last year I speed ran triangle multiple times and that's actually when I finally started understanding all of these concepts. Repetition, repetition, repetition! Yay, I get it now! Uh, boring, show me the cool stuff already! <laughs> okay, I represent the coolest things I've made so far with graphics programming, starting with water! Uh, here's a basic landscape shader that takes the texture as a height map. This is a rather simple wind shader, but I think it does the job pretty well. Check out this reflective water. This is a voxel engine I made completely without a game engine. What about some scene transitions or this animated background? So those are some things I made with graphics programming. And the good news I have for you is you don't need to have a PhD in OpenGL to do most of these things. If you're using your game engine, of course. Game engines hides away the complexity of the graphics APIs, and you get to focus on the important parts. Node shaders, for example, are very applicable to code. I actually made this water following an Unreal Engine tutorial, where they used the node system to make this water shader. Translating nodes into code isn't too hard, but the difference from using Unreal to not using a game engine is in the game engine you create a shader and the material for it. Making things with the graphics API, this is what I had to do. I first realized I needed a time uniform to animate this water. I made a bind group layout, so the shaders know when they can use this data. I passed this memory layout to all render pipelines so we can use them in the shaders. We need to update the time data every game tick and send that to the uniform buffer. Before rendering, we need to set up the bind group. We can now use this time in the shader. And let's not forget, I need to write the actual shader code. I also had to set up a render pipeline, which is a lot of code. As you can see, there's a lot more steps I had to take using a graphics API. In a game engine, you only need to think about writing the shader. While I also had to write the shader, I also need to think about every step in the process of how to get the data into the shader. The point I'm trying to get to is that before ever touching a graphics API, you can actually learn parts of graphics programming without having to worry about all of the stuff surrounding it. You can make a lot of cool stuff without ever having touched a graphics API. But for me, I really like to dig into the depths of how everything works, because I find it super interesting. When I got into graphics programming, I thought it would be 90% about problem solving. That might be true, but the fundamentals that powers all of this is math, algorithms and memory management. If you're going to generate meshes, you need to think about the index buffer, the UV map. If you get just one part wrong, chances are the mesh is going to explode. Like that. Let's take a look on some of the problem solving you get to do when you do graphics programming. For this water shader, I needed a subdivided plane, so I made a function for that. I had to draw an image and visualize every single step in this algorithm to figure out how this algorithm should work. It took me a few hours to make this. The water movement is made using a Gerstner function. I don't know exactly how this algorithm works, I did a few years ago, but it doesn't matter as long as I understand how the parameters works. The foam texture of the water looks like this, and I draw this foam texture twice. 
we could offset the sampling of the texture so we get this distortion effect. To make it a little bit more lively, I offset the two foam textures differently. I thought I would highlight the code, but I realized it's going to take some time to go through this, but you can pause and look at the code if you want to. Let's move on. This wind shader I made isn't that fancy, but let's take a look on the math, shall we? I started out by offsetting the vertex position based on the sign value of their world position. This looks very uniform, so I thought, hmm, leaves further out should move more than leaves further in. That makes sense. So what if this wobbly offset can be multiplied by the distance from the vertex to the center of the tree? Okay, it didn't make a huge difference, but mer. I feel like things further up on the tree should swing more than things further down. Well, we can measure the distance from the vertex to the trunk of the tree. This looks a lot more better now. I think this is one of the most fun things to do with graphics programming and of course you don't need to use a graphics API to do all of this, you can just use a game engine or a game framework, so that's nice. While I haven't reached the skill level I want, I wanted to document my journey so far. Of course I haven't shown everything I've made, I haven't either showcased the amount of times I've been pulling my hair out because this is really hard to learn. Having good tutorials to follow is important. I've had to redo these tutorials countless of times and even to this day I need to glance over them to refresh my skills. I recommend completing these tutorials and then simply take a break. And then you come back and redo it again. There is so much information to digest, so repetition of course is key. But hey, we're programmers. If there's one thing we're good at, it is pushing through the learning process when there is a lot of friction. You'll get there eventually. I'm confident that in one or two years I'll look back on this video and I will be able to make interactable grass and snow.